So my business started from a vintage Breitling Navitana. That started my whole obsession with design. Then personalization came into it, and yeah. I believed in personalization. So, so where did the Breitling watch come from? Which from my father. My gift. father gave it to me. He brought it for nothing. I mean, really nothing. I mean, he brought it for 200 quid. Yeah. But it was just amazing, because I loved the idea of this aesthetic with the, the bubble dial, and yeah. I just loved how it formed. And that yeah. was where the whole thing started, and it was just like... Wow, the this, this start of these lightning bolts going in my head. And photography is also is my other, my other passion. That's why I went to Parsons in New York and I, I studied photography and yeah. design. These are all car photography. As with cars, you have to have car photography. So yes. these are the photo photographs I've done for different magazines. I've got uh, Octane to uh, Wonderful Naked Women. So, yes. I mean, that's kind of... <laughs> I'm just like, naked women. <laughs> uh, did I really see that there? I know. <laughs> And then when you were asking about design, for me, I love different designs. So, you know, I love the 275 GTB. I love the lines of a 275 GTB. And I just love those kind of the gills and the, I love the pin lines. Just everything about design. And so for me, that was where kind of my passion on cars came from, was yeah. all these different design aesthetics. Yeah. I also have ugly cars, but they're for, for a lot of fun. So I, it's, think, it's I think we passed your... Um your ugly car on the way in, didn't we? Yeah, it's the, the Land Rover 101. Yeah. yeah, it's a bit of a, a bit of an ugly beast, oh, I but I think it's beautiful. And I wanted to get a, uh, a vehicle to take my friends from here to the pub, and so I built the 101. And it's a, it's a Land Rover that was built for the army, and it's become the party bus. It's a standard 101, but we've kind of jazzed it up. Top speeds 55 miles an hour, and yeah. you're driving it like a truck, so you're like this. <laughs> but it just makes me smile, you know, like, oh yeah, I can go across that field. Oh. Going up to London, that, that's going to be a lot of, that's going to be, uh, let's, let's, yeah, let's, let's I, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll wait until you, you see how loud it is and everything. Lead the way. Okay, we've, um, we've come to the conclusion that it's impossible to interview George in this, in this wonderful thing, because it's just too noisy, and uh, we've decided that it's not the most appropriate vehicle to go out to London in. So what we're going to do is we're going to head back, we're going to peruse his fine collection of motor vehicles, and we're going to choose something, we're going to go in that instead. So, um, George, if we could turn around, and I guess head back the way we came. Consider it done. earlier. <laughs> it may be essential later on. <laughs> but you know what's going to happen is something's going to break down because it's just knowing my luck on any of these things. Is we, we, yes, you have been saying. I had, I warned you in advance. Yeah, you have. I'll, I'll give you that. Shall we about your, I mean, your, your love of design, I mean, it goes back 
some way now, doesn't it? I mean, well, it's been a part of your life for a long time, hasn't it? it? Well, design has, you know, you've got to imagine. Uh, so, my family business, uh, it's JCB, so it's Yellow Diggers on the side of the road. Yeah, sure. That's design, that was engineering, and for me, that's, that's in my DNA. Yeah. So, it's got to be, you know, in my business now, I've got to have design. Yeah. You know, the reason why I set up my business was because my father went to me and, um, and said uh, that uh, you're not coming into the business until you set up your own business. Really? You neither make a success or screw up on your really? own dime. And for me, that was one of the best things he's ever done. Yeah, sure. Now, he did ask me recently, oh, would I like to come into the business? It's, and it took me a year to decide. But the reason why I didn't go into the business because I, I built my own business and I built yeah. my own footsteps that I hopefully my son will want to be a part of. Absolutely. So that's why I didn't go into the family business. But it must have been quite a difficult decision. Oh, Jesus Christ! You know, it's. I mean, that's uh, a big one. Uh, and it's a, you know, it's one of those that you kind of go, God, that's an amazing thing to be a part of. Yeah. But it just, you know, for me, I, I look at JCB as such a wonderful business. But to go into my father's, to even have a hint of my father's footsteps, yeah. my grandfather's footsteps, yeah. it's quite daunting. I'm probably taking the chicken way out. I'd said no, but it, you know, it's just one of those things that, I, you know, my father and, and what he's done, my grandfather, what he's done, it was just one of those things that I I probably was too daunting for me. Yeah. And I realized, that, you know, I, I realized for myself that this was something that I thought, actually I've got to do it myself. And I built my own business and also learn from my own business. In a big business like JCB, I'd never learn the small minutiae yeah. of business. Yeah. You know, like accounts packages and all the all the boring shit that you gotta yes. go is boring shit. Actually, I'm so pleased I've learned it. Yeah. I think we had a very good drive down. I think um, you know, for me, it was nice to come into London, it was a nice experience what you said about actually this is a good test of a car from the start to finish. Yeah. You know, we did the B roads to the motorway to the to the city Town roads. Driving, yeah. it, it was a nice drive and for me what was wonderful is that firstly our conversations. I mean that yeah. was kind of non stop throughout the whole yeah. I didn't even miss music and, no. and that was that was kind of a strange thing with those cars is that you kind of Sometimes when you're on your own, you miss the music. It was a really good drive, and welcome to the Hive. Sorry, I, I should have said, welcome to the Hive. This is bound for Watch Farm, it's HQ, but it, we call it the Hive, um, as we all are busy bees. These are design rooms, so we have actually our graphics team that come in and design on the TV, and, and you can actually come in and design your nth degree of your watch. The lady's brought in her lipstick and wanted you to copy the lipstick. Um, I'm just trying to think of racing silks, uh, someone's brought in the speedo of their car. It, we have a motto, if you can imagine it, we can create it, and that's what we've done. This is a plethora of designs we've done. Things. You know, for me, at the moment, um, I always love aqua blue. You can see on the Concorde, it's, uh, it's black and aqua blue. But for me, I, I, it's not about the numbers, it's about, can we make your dream come true in a, a watch? Can we make it individual for you? Yeah. And make something where you go, okay, this is me, this is my colorways. I like aqua blue. You may say to me, you know what, I want it to match my funky co coloured socks, so I yeah. want a pink, blue and, and yellow. Yeah. I will suggest maybe not doing it that way, <laughs> but... but what, George, what are you saying about my socks? No, I'm liking your socks. <laughs> so what's the most extreme thing you've had to match it to, or the most out there thing? I suppose a lipstick's pretty frivolous, I quite like that. And, well, <laughs> it, no, but this is the problem with the lipstick. So it was a 1950s Chanel lipstick. So that was a no, that was wonderful. Sorry, that was. Uh, that, was a, that was a really. That was a joy. It was. Match, a, it, I'm sure. No, I had to go and find a 1950s Chanel red lipstick, and it was a certain red. That was. Um, I do not envy you on that one. No, but. But, that, but that's what you're and about. And we delivered it in eight weeks. I've, I've got to ask you a really difficult question. Have you got any favourites? It's a difficult question because actually. My favourites change on a, on, yeah. a, on a weekly basis. Um, I'm wearing Aqua Blue Dial Super Matte uh, Daytona. This is something I've been wearing for the last six months, and I love it. I almost want to throw it at you, but... Uh, <laughs> that's the matte black, and this is MGTC, so this is our own coating. Right. Uh, Military-grade titanium coating. I'm sorry that I'm blocking you, but you're, you'll see me in two seconds. Military-grade so. titanium coating. Can you that's talk about where you get that done? Ooh. Oh, that's punchy. Okay. Um, okay, so military grade titanium coating um, is a uh, company that I, um, we own a 
piece of, and we've done the coating for um, with them. We've developed this coating. Wow. Um, we've spent quite a lot of money making sure that we get the coating 100%. There's two favourites. Milgauss is one of the iconic watches of Red X, and everyone would go, no, I don't agree with you. But the reason why I'm saying it is iconic because it's iconic for me. Sure. I got a Rolex Milgauss, and for me, it hit every point in my life that were iconic points. Mm. The day I got engaged, I had this Milgauss on my wrist. The day I got married, I had this Milgauss. The day my kid was born, it always happenstance. So yeah. for me, that's why I love Milgausses. This is a hand-engraved Milgauss, um, and this is ex-gun engravers. Right. If you look closely, you can intricate. see how wonderfully and how much time has gone into it. So this is a hand engraved watch. This is this is a prototype. So I've got a prototype in my hand that is a Paul Newman dial. So it's grey with blue. Um, this may this may see the light of day, or it may actually be sold quite quickly to Can a I client. Have a quick look at it before yeah, of it course. disappears forever. So I'm saying it's a prototype, but it is a one on one. And, it, and someone, and we could potentially a, a private customer buy this. Well, as soon, as soon as you've left me, we've got two clients coming in this afternoon. So this watch hasn't really seen the light of day, and that one hasn't seen the light of day. Well, it's fantastic. And you're asking about my favourites. These are my new favourites. You can come in or come to our partners. So we've got uh, dealers around the world. The head service centre is here. We've got another head service centre in New York. I have to ask, yeah. well, how, how, how do Rolex feel about it? Uh, I would say it's a love-hate relationship. I'm sure that they don't like us, but we love Rolex. So <laughs> it's, it's probably, um, look, we avoid their warranty, we avoid their servicing. So the responsibility of the watch is, is null and void from Rolex. So right. I take all that responsibility on. Okay. This is why I haven't come up with a cool name for my business. I, you know, my name is on the dial. Yeah. And my email is george at bamford.com. I mean, it, I, I put it out to everyone. Yeah, sure. it's, it's about that thing of saying, if there's a problem, I'm here to solve it. When I look at bath rooms, every product is unisex, even if they say they're male. Bamford Grooming Department, it's a range, so shampoo, moisturiser, we've got uh, exfoliator, uh, hand and body wash, and we've got a shave oil. I know it looks like I, I, <laughs> I grow it up and then I cut throat rays right. back, and I use shave oil. And for me, shave oil has just got a really nice feel, and it's post and, and pre. So we went for a vetiver. Vetiver is something that my father used to wear, and uh, it still okay. does, but Every time I used to go into his, his room and nick his scent and think I was a cool boy and all those things and you know, I think I, even my first date I wore vetiver and it was just that whole smell of vetiver. I just love the vetiver. There's a lot of history there. The product uh, has just come out. Um, so Mr. Porter, Dover Street Market in London, uh, Dover Street Market in New York and Colette in Paris. I hope I've succeeded, but you know you never know. Yeah. And when you're putting your foot out there, you, you sometimes are a little bit like, <laughs> have I done a good job? But you know w what the reaction has been mm -hmm. has been very positive. Um, at the moment, it's a vanity project. Hopefully, it becomes a sanity project, and that's what I, uh, you know, my watch business to start off with is, mm -hmm. was a vanity project. Then it turned into a sanity project. George, fantastic! I, I can't thank you enough for your time. It's been brilliant. Um, my pleasure. This has been a blast. It's been a really good day. Thank you very, very much. My I pleasure. I hope you stay in touch. Definitely.